Hi. Today we're going to talk about Coulomb's Law. We have two goals today. So we will talk about Coulomb's Law, which what it does is allow us to calculate the force between two charges, two objects with charge. And secondly, we'll look at uh, the parallel between the force of gravity and the force between electric charges. And this one's fairly short, this uh, movie here. Okay, so we'll look at the force between electric charges. And so if we take two charged objects, we'll give one object a charge lowercase q, and the other one will have a charge of uppercase q. And we'll separate them by distance r. While they exert forces on one another, they may be attractive or repulsive, depending on when they, whether they have the same sign or opposite signs. And so the magnitude of the force is given by what we call Coulomb's Law, and it looks like this. The magnitude of the force is some constant k, which we'll talk about in a minute, times the product of the two charges, q times q, divided by the square of the distance between them. So you, the bigger you make either of the charges, the bigger the force gets, and the more distance you put between the charges, the smaller the force gets. Okay, so this is what k is. k is a constant, and it has, it has a value which is very, very close to 9 times 10 to the 9 newton meter squared per coulomb squared. Now, of course, this is a force we're talking about, or two forces. Each one of the objects experiences a force, and therefore it has a direction, because force is a vector. So the direction of the force that is exerted on the first object by the second one is toward the second object if the objects have opposite signs. That's just a long-winded way of saying unlike charges attract. And this force on the first object is away from the second object if the signs are the same. And that's a long-winded way of saying like charges repel. Okay, but Coulomb's law allows us to be very quantitative in, in calculating the force that one charge exerts on another charge. Now, we've seen something like this before, so I hope Coulomb's law reminds you of something that you've seen. So just consider the form kqq over r squared, and I hope it looks like Newton's universal law of gravitation. So we'll look at that parallel between gravity and electrostatic charges for, for a minute or two. Okay, so here we go, comparing the gravitational force, the magnitude of which is given by gmm over r squared. So you can see the equations look very similar. The equivalent equation for charges is kqq over r squared. So the r squareds are the same thing. In both cases, the force magnitude depends on the square of the distance between the objects. It depends on the product of a property of one object and a property of the other one. It's m times m in the case of gravitational interaction. It's q times q in the case of the electrostatic interaction. And then we simply have another constant, a constant in each case that gets the uh, units right and things like that. Okay. So just to summarize, well, one thing is, in general, the force of gravity is much weaker than electrostatic interactions. So an example of that is, let's say you, say you take an electron and a proton, and you put them some distance apart. It doesn't actually matter how much distance apart there is, because you've got r squared, the distance squared, in the denominator in both the equations. If you look up the mass of the proton and the mass of the electron and the value of g, you can work out the value of the force of gravity. Then you look up the charge on the electron and the charge on the proton. Of course, they're both e, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, magnitude-wise at least. And then you get the value of k. If you do this for an electron and a proton, you'll find the electrostatic force, the force due to the charges, is actually 40 orders of magnitude or so larger than the gravitational interaction between the electron and the proton. Okay. Now, in many other cases, you're going to find that gravity is kind of important. Okay, and it's simply because 
in many cases you have no net charge so when the charges all cancel each other out then gravity is, is very important so I'm not downplaying the, the importance of gravity you know we spent a lot of that time on that previously so it's certainly an important force but in a case like the electron and the proton it's completely negligible the gravitational interaction in comparison to the electrostatic interaction okay here's a big difference between the two forces the gravitational force is always attractive masses attract charges on the other hand may attract each other or they may repel it depends on the sign of the charges finally these equations certainly have the same kind of form and so they give rise to very similar behavior so in other words if you know a little bit about how to use the gravitational equation what the behavior is then you've already got some insight into what happens with interactions between charges when you change the value of Q or when you separate them by a different amount of distance okay speaking of which that distance effect let's have a quick look at um, what 1 over r squared looks like okay so here we have a charged object, object 1, and there's another charged object nearby, object 2, and we can see little green arrows attached to them, and clearly the charges are repelling each other because these two charges have the same sign. And we're graphing here the size and direction of the force experienced by object 1 as a function of the position of object 2. Okay, so the green arrow green arrows on each charge kind of represent that too but then we've got this overall graph okay so first of all right there where object 2 is now x position is 3 meters away from object 1 the graph shows that the force is negative okay so what does that mean well here we're defining to the right as positive to the left as negative and we're graphing the force experienced by object 1 which when object 2 is at x equals 3 meters is to the left that's the force on object 1 is to the left that's our negative direction okay so let's move object 2 around a little bit we'll slide it to the left and we'll see what happens and as we see as it comes left it comes closer to object 1 the forces get bigger and bigger and bigger and then we're going to move it past object 1 and the force forces reverse direction on each charge and then they steadily get smaller and smaller and smaller as the charges get further and further away anyway so this these graphs really show you what one over r squared looks like when you get really close the force is huge and as you get far away the force drops off towards zero okay so let's talk about a question here where we can apply coulomb's law so we start with the situation shown in the picture at the bottom. Two equal charges, Q, are placed a certain distance apart. They exert equal and opposite forces, F, on one another. Now the charges have the same sign, so the force is it's a repulsive interaction. So the force on one goes left, and the force on number two goes to the right. Now we're going to take one of the charges, and we'll double the magnitude of the charge to 2q. We're going to change it from q to 2q. What happens to the magnitude of the force that each charge experiences? So answer 1, both charges experience forces of magnitude 2f now. Answer 2, the q charge experiences a force of 2f. The 2q charge experiences a force f. 3, the q charge experiences a force of f. The 2q charge experiences a force of 2f. 4, none of the above. So see what you think is the best answer to that question. Okay, so I want to examine that question from two perspectives. First of all, we can bring in Newton's third law. When object 1 applies a force to object 2, object 2 always applies an equal and opposite force back on object 1. So that worked for, say, colliding carts or a car and a truck running into each other. 
Now we've got tiny little charges. Maybe they're tiny. Does Newton's third law still work? Absolutely it does. Okay? So can one object experience a larger magnitude force than the other one? Absolutely not. Newton's third law tells us the objects have to experience equal and opposite forces. Okay, so that's number one. Then we've got Coulomb's law. This allows us to calculate what happens if we double the size of one of the charges? What happens to that force? So let's first apply Coulomb's law to the original situation. So here is F. F was the original force. Well, that's given by K times Q times Q. Those are the two original charges divided by whatever distance it was between them squared. And there was our original picture. And so now what we're going to do is just take one of the charges and double it. So we'll do k times q times 2q over r squared. And so that's simply a factor of 2 bigger than what we had before. So instead of f, we now have 2f. Okay? And so what happens is that each of the charges now experiences a force which is twice as large as it did before. And it didn't matter which of these charges we doubled to 2q. Okay, you get the same basic picture no matter which of the charges went to 2q. Okay, so in our application of Coulomb's law, k times q times 2q over r squared equals 2f, which object are we applying that to? Well, turns out it doesn't really matter, right? If you apply it to object 1, then you multiply the value of k times the value of the first charge times the value of the second charge divided by r squared, the distance between them squared, if you apply it to object 2, you have exactly the same factors. So the force that one of the charges experiences is proportional to the product of the two charges. So the two charges multiplied together. So Coulomb's law applies equally, applies just the same way to object 1 as it does to object 2. Okay, so that is all for our discussion of Coulomb's Law today.